Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing marvellously well. I'm here in Labaka Studios, which is uh, Nick Salden's studio in lovely West Sussex. And I am wearing a pair of Biodynamic DT770 Pros, which I've got to be honest, I'm kind of enjoying. I had the 1990s for years and really liked them. I, I don't know what the difference is. These sound just as good. Anyway, we're about to demo Antelope Audio's plug-in range. Now, of course, you know them from their interfaces, and their plugins do come with their interfaces, I think, a certain amount. Now, of course, you can buy them as a standalone plugin. So stay tuned for a review, and of course, enter to win some of the plugins down below. So let's check out the website here. It's Native Synergy Core. So essentially what they've done, if you, you remember we've reviewed Antelope stuff on and off over the last few years, and the plugins come, like a couple of other companies, come with the hardware. Well, this time you can get the software where separately. Antelope are going to continually update this. They have over 80 plugins already made and 38 exist in this sphere. Is that right? This universe. And they're constantly adding them. Apparently they've added five since we uh, started this video. So stay tuned for more plugins to be added to this bundle. So I believe it's $14.95 a month. Oh, and by the way, you can win one of five two-year licenses on this. Five. They've given generously given us five two-year licenses. So they've got a photo up here of uh, the Opto 2A, which is obviously the LA 2A. They've got the BAE 1073, which we know and love. As you know, we have a lot of BAE gear. There's the Blonder Tongue there. Do you know the Blonder Tongue? It's quite famous for Jack Joseph Puig and also Joe Zook, who I believe Joe worked with uh, with Jack for quite a few years, or at least for a period of time. I know he loves them too. So here we have preamps, channel strips, pedals, uh, delay and modulation, equalizers, dynamic processors, and of course, more coming soon. I mean, they're priding themselves, and it's, you be the judge. Obviously, you be the judge, but they're priding themselves on really taking the time and energy to capture analog equipment. It's great that so many hardware companies that are selling interfaces are moving into this as well, because, of course, these plugins will come with their hardware. But I do like the fact that here they are. You can get them on their own if you go to here. So it looks like, let's have a quick check. So preserving vintage heritage, classic sound with modern workflow, everyone's invited, join the antelope community. So you can buy it in a year and get two months for free. But I think this is what I suggest you all do. Let's go here. Start a free trial. Try it out for free. I think with any of these reviews, my philosophy is find what I like about something. You know, is it good for this? Is it good for that? So you can see if it's something that you might use it for. But the reality, of course, is like you need to download these things yourself and try them out yourself. I am the dumb reviewer, and I pride myself on being the dumb reviewer. I will open up these plugins and stick them on a track and see how they sound. I like being the dumb reviewer. What I always suggest you do is download a free trial and actually try them out for yourself and see how they work on your mixes. So speaking of which, let's try out the plugins. So we have the Don't Let Me Down multi-track, which is the Aspen Pitman AP-1B FET microphone that we demoed a few days ago. I'm rather excited by this because it's one of my favorite songs ever. I got to play guitar on it. We got two wonderful singers. Our intern, Jude, played piano on it. A wonderful player. And I think he's still like 19. Like amazing. Really knows how to lay back, which I think is insane for a 19-year-old. I couldn't do that. Well, I tried hard. And then, of course, V and Caitlin, two wonderful, wonderful singers. V was actually eight months pregnant when she sung this, so thank you, V. And Fernando. Fernando playing both bass and drums. Wonderful musician. This is a labor of love. I think everybody involved in this song absolutely loves it. So let's check it out. So here's everything at zero. Don't let me Great. Really straightforward, clean, raw tracks. Printing a little loud there. Let's just go to all here and just bring everything down. First thing we're going to do, come out of all. Don't let me down. 
Cool. So the first thing I did was just bring everything down. I can leave the uh, the master at, uh, at zero, but brought the tracks down. So I'm going to do the quickest rough mix. To be honest, that's not actually that bad. Let's, have, let's solo the drums up quickly. Here's the kick. Lots of bleed in the snare. So there's not going to be a lot of compression going down. And also, Fernando, I think he prints through a Yamaha digital mixer. It's like an all-in-one mixer with EQ and interface, everything, you know, built in. So there's quite a lot of bleed in that snare. Let's go to the overheads. So we've got to be careful on these drums, not to over-compress, not to do too much work. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just gently do some EQ on the kick. And I'm going to listen to the drums all together at all times, not solo. Let's grab the BAE. BAE are a company we've loved right from the beginning. I think one of our first, maybe our first ever video, we talked about BAE. Definitely the first couple. They're one of those companies that everybody considers to be like at the top of the pile when it comes to Neve like proper clones, not lookalikes, but actual sounds. They use like Biore switches, like these really expensive switch, Swiss switches. Say that when you're drunk. They're really, really well made, beautifully made. So these are emulations of their preamps and EQ. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump up some 60 hertz on that kick. Take it out. Back in. That's beautiful. Let's take a little bit of 360 out and see if we can get a bit of attack out of it. So we're going to cut some 360, which is some ugly low mids. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just put a bit of top end, which is shelved at 10K and see if it brings out some attack. All I'm concerned about is I don't want to boost too much top end on the snare and the kick because this is just four mics on the drum kit. I don't want like all the bleed of the other ones to come in. It's pretty tasty. So that's let's do a before. Here's before any EQ. On. There's a volume difference, but it's a volume difference that I want because, of course, it's a lot more low end, a little tiny bit of bite of the high end for some snap and some low mid cut. So, yes, it has turned it up. I know everybody's really militant about going, hear it before and after with the volume. The point is, is like the difference is so massive. Hopefully, you're not going to be fooled by it being 2 dB louder because of all the low end. If you boost low end or boost anything, it is going to make it louder. But it's a huge difference in, in, in for me. Okay so, okay, so let's grab the snare. I'm actually probably, just because I want to show off all the different mics, let's find a different EQ. There's a Lang here. So let's go and see what we got available. I wouldn't normally use a Lang, but I want to. Let's go here and boost some high ends. I've got it on 7.5K. I like that a lot. It's probably picking up a bit of hat and stuff like that, but so far hasn't bothered me. Let's go to the boost at maybe 120, mm, 160 to 240. See, normally I do need 220 on a snare. So it's all right, let's go to let's go to 240 and boost that. See if we can get some body out of the snare. That's nice. Bypass. Back up. It's actually pretty, that's pretty effective. I might use the Lang for the low end. Now, there's some low frequency droop. I don't know how much bleed there is of the kick in there. It isn't really bothering me at the moment, so I'm not going to go in surgically on something that I don't think I need to. But for EQ on the overheads, I'm going to want to cut a little bit of low mids because... Let's remember, of course, let's go to the 1084, because let's remember, of course, that those overhead mics were also picking up the toms. So we make sure we selected the stereo version of the 1084. So let's cut some 360. Bypass. Don't cut 
that much. Not as bad as I thought. So better boosting to 110 there. I don't think I need to do anything else. I think that's the drum sound. All right, so let's have a listen before and after. So here is a before on the drums. Pretty low. Really good on that line. Question is, is there going to be enough mids on the snare to make it cut? At the moment, it's like really nice. I'm actually going to pull up the seven and a half a bit more. Great. Let's go to the bass. I'm really digging it. So bass, we've got a DI and an amp. Throw in those two together with the drums. So there's just a couple of notes that are getting a little bit out of control here. This is not one of the tracks I'm going to be using a dynamic or a multiband or anything silly like that on because there's no way they had any of access to that at all. If you remember the movie, Get Back, when they were doing this, I think they were putting it down to four track. Most of this is super live. And, and they had the old school red desks for a large majority of it. I don't even know if they did anything on transistor. I think it was all on tube desks. I could be wrong. My point is, whatever they did, it was primitive compared with using digital technology. So we're not going to get too carried away. So there's a part of me that doesn't actually want to do anything immediately with EQ, believe it or not. I'm going to try out some of these fancy new compressors, for instance. So here's for the DI. Just listen to the DI on its own, just for a second. So this is the stay level, stay gate, stay level. Okay, so that's dumb, does the job. Let's put the amp in. So there might be some phase polarity issues there because the low end did not increase when the two were together. Interesting. We need to delay the DI ever so slightly. So if you see here, this is, I'm literally going to take the DI and we go to samples up here and it's 97 samples back. So let's just come in here, grab a delay. We just use the time adjuster and do 97 samples. Now, lots of people ask me why I don't just drag it back. You can if you want. I'm just superstitious. I like it where it's printed. So it's here before and after. So here's before, so let's put that on bypass. Night and day. Take it off. Back on. Off. Back on. I get all kinds of comments from different people. Some people are like, don't speak. Then other people say, you, you should stop between testing it so you can hear it without the plug-in on and give us a second to clear our ears. Some people say scientifically, that's actually the way to do it. All I know is like the, the difference is massive. If you're not hearing that, please be hearing it. Here is without it on. Here's with it on. Now, the dynamics on the amp aren't as great because it's going through an amp and there's all that circuitry in there. So actually, I'm happy. That, to me, is the bass sound. I could maybe take off some, do some high passing, but I'm also like, they didn't have that many sophisticated things. So here we go. So that's just with the Stay Levin on it. So next thing I'm going to do is go to the guitar, played by yours truly. I'm not going to do much to it because, to be honest, it's, it's through uh, my Fender 65 Deluxe Tone Master. And 
you can have a listen to it. And if you want, people hate this, but I'm going to say it, look at the waveforms. It's naturally compressed with the amount of drive that's going on there. I don't really need to do much to it. It sounds really good. So let's throw in Jude's keyboards. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I'm taking the left-hand side of his keys and putting it more in the middle. So my guitar's panned 73% to the left and his keys are panned more to the right. Okay, so let's get on to the vocal. Now, we've got some other fun things. There is an LA-2A they've done, an Opto. 2A. Also, they've done the Tube Child as well, and a bunch of Poltex. So why don't we decide, I think I'll show you on the keys before I put the vocals in, why don't we use a little bit of Poltec high-end? So let's, we've got the VEQ here, which is the Poltec 1A. So I'm going to get in there and go up to 10K. Mm, maybe you can make it more guitar area, 5K. <laughs> Let's just copy that over to the guitar, so now the same EQs on both. <laughs> Little fizzy on the guitar, you heard that fizz when I cranked it. The reason why I decided to use the same EQ on both sides is for exactly that, same EQ on both sides. So it keeps the stereo kind of width. The guitar all the way over here, the piano over there, and solidifies it. High mid boost, you hear high mids best. You know, you start to hear that pretty quickly. So we're gonna try the uh, Tube Child on the vocal. the time to straight down. down. Let's go to somewhere, so for instance, where she is at the end of the phrase here. That last Don't phrase comes through. Let me down. Don't let me down. And there's some grit and distortion going on in her voice, which I'm all for. If anybody's going to complain about that, well, yeah, that's kind of what I like about it. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. So I'm going to copy that setting down exactly to Caitlin's voice. Don't let me down. Just bring it down a little bit so it's a bit more of a background. Don't let me down. Nice. Don't let me down. Now the Beatles would have had Fairchild, so it also would have had the Altex as well, which were obviously massively heavily modified by the EMI engineers. Pretty close. I mean, we're, we're, in the, we're in the ballpark of, of what was available at the time. Not necessarily any of this particular piece of gear, but definitely more primitive stuff. Obviously, 1084s didn't come out till uh, probably seven, eight years after this. But it's the idea of using analog stuff. So let's see what we can maybe do on the master bus. Don't let me down. You 
know, I just want to hear what the Fairchild sounds like. Now, obviously, the default on the Fairchild seems to be very, very aggressive. Let's see. Let's bring down the input straight away. Don't let me down. 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 Again, it's a kiss it as it were and I think that would be better don't let me down it's gluing it in the world of uh, immersive audio we seem to be getting away from that kind of glued thing that we're used to in stereo, except with the exception of the great Bob Clear Mountain, of course, who is mixing and making just, oh, I don't know, you've got to hear his mixes. They're phenomenal in immersive. They're just like what you want it to be. But a lot of immersive stuff is kind of object-based and all this kind of stuff. And so people are starting to mix a little bit like that. You know, for, I, I do like it when things do feel like they're just a little bit more glued. That's what this is doing here. Rather nice, rather subtle. Check out the link down below. These, these are fun to use, particularly like the Lang EQ there. The 240 is gorgeous. The 1084's EQ is fantastic. 1073's we all know and love. And of course, the Fairchild always does the job. Stay Levin, stay level. So maybe that's a Tony Levin reference. Who knows? So thanks, everyone. Don't forget, you can... Enter to win one of bundles down below here. There is a link to win one of these three bundles. Please download these multi-tracks and mix them for yourself. If you're an Academy member, you can upload the mix there and we will review the mix. We'll review your mixes. I look forward to hearing everybody's mixes. Thanks, everyone. So long. Farewell. Au revoir. Adios. Thanks, Antelope, for giving us three copies to give away. Goodbye.